Today, we're excited to show off the big ticket item sure to catch everyone's eye with this wave. Set number 80036, the City of Lanterns. This set contains approximately 2,187 pieces and will retail for $149.99 in the United States. Where do we even begin on this one? It continues to be immensely impressive how LEGO is able to cram in so much detail into one set to create a living, breathing city environment that is packed to the brim with details ranging from wall-mounted AC units to Easter eggs calling back to fan-favorite LEGO themes. Contained within the set seems to be a karaoke booth, a bubble tea stand, a traditional Asian restaurant, a panda convenience store, the Lotus Hotel, topped with this season's MacGuffin, a tram advertising Pigsy's Noodles, a shrimp or other crustacean-themed restaurant, a micro Lego store complete with an adorable Legoland-style dragon, and between it all, so very much more. Aside from being a fantastically built slice of what city life is like for MK and his pals, we're also treated to something rather incredible for the build. Each shop is a standalone build, able to be easily removed from its base and shuffled around as you please, allowing for a totally customizable building experience. Beneath the base of everything is even storage for a bunch of black pins, protected by the fiercest of frogs, to hold it all together, should you want to set things up in a more strip mall type style. This set also includes nine minifigures, Pigsy, CityBots A05 and A16, Huang, Mr. Tang and Mei in civilian garb, a train driver, Han, and MK, also in a new hoodie and rocking some stylish monkey shades, somehow his staff, as well as a compass and a map presumably to the MacGuffin atop the hotel. Going back to the buildings in no particular order here, the karaoke booth is a lively and delightful one-room build, capable of holding two minifigs comfortably, though maybe just one at the time for now if you want to practice social distancing. Included is a screen for lyrics, two microphones and clips to hold them, and a rocking sign with a giant microphone outside. We really like the colored tubes lining the door and the magic wands accenting the sign. The bubble tea stand was also very clever in its construction, again utilizing the circular tiles within a tall see-through 1x2 piece, similar to the vending machine included with the white dragon horse jet, though this time as a decorative pattern fronting the stall, rather than as a vending machine. The cups themselves are awesome and knock it out of the park with their shaping. I'm personally very fond of the glittery purple cone used for the glass in front. Outside is a poster advertising what looks like peach-flavored drinks, two decorative red lanterns, and a lotus-topped bubble tea cup logo atop a cloud-shaped sign and a mock neon sign. The shingle appearance construction here is particularly clever, and the roof contains the stairs that lead to the upper levels of the rest of the City of Lanterns. Front and center in the build is a soup and monkey themed restaurant adorned in a clever brick built monkey head and yin yang inspired soup bowl with chopsticks. The front also shows off this incredibly detailed yet strikingly simple build for roofing tiles, using green colored treasure bars to perfectly communicate the tiled look. The goods store, or main lobby at the base, is fascinating as well. Contained within are some average everyday foods like small cakes and a dumpling meal, but also bull horns, a gas mask, an eerie bone, and what seems to be some of the spider demon's venom. Dubious or not though, at least the restaurant is staying safe with its built-in fire extinguisher, and just outside is a poster for those rocking monkey shades. One of the best parts is the dining area in the upper levels, however, with the stained glass windows and cozy tables adorned in chopsticks and condiments. Another building included is a panda convenience store, making their return, or at least somehow still running, after the gold and silver demons presumably filed for bankruptcy or sold the chain to someone else. Regardless of how it's here, the shop includes just a handful of goods and bottles, 
and naturally, a golden frog to watch over it all. The Lotus Hotel stands tall over the rest of the build, standing back in center and proudly displaying its petals and the flaming ring MacGuffin, protected by four fierce stone frog goils. The entrance is well framed by an inviting glass door, two well-trimmed plants, and a bright red rug. The interior of this hotel, however, is just as lovely. Starting on the base floor is a place for your luggage, and one level up is a cozy bed with a view over the city and a warm lamp illuminating the delightful artwork adorning the interior. While they are stickers, they are some darned pretty ones at that. Best book the room now. With the holidays coming up, this place is sure to be in high demand. Now, if only it had a breakfast bar and a pool. While not necessarily a building, the tram or train proudly advertising Pigsy's noodles encircles the core of the build like a low-set pink halo. Well, more like a hula hoop, but potato potato. It's a simple build designed to seat one minifig per car, but we particularly enjoy the use of this teal track running around the build, adding this feel of a mid-city subway or transit system connecting you from building to building. On the note of the rails, there's an additional rail piece hidden in the back of the build, and while we can't say for certain, we can't help but wonder if it was left there for use in a future modular building, or just as a clamp to hold the train in place. Next up is an outdoor dining experience prepared by one part crustacean, one part giant neon sign, and one part professional chef. While not much of a building in itself, any minifigure craving shrimp dinner will be delighted to see this clever usage of small, red claws heaped high in a bowl and ready to eat. No need to worry about falling from this patio thanks to the seafood-induced stupor either. All diners will be kept safe by the Snap brand fencing around the dining area. Now on to everyone's favorite place to shop and somewhere we should all visit to stock up for the holidays. This micro Lego store won't be held back by its micro-modular size. Not only is it adorned in a fierce dragon and two cleverly built giant tile pieces, but within is an entire shelf with all kinds of sets complete with a display case showing off what looks to be like the Monkey King Warrior mech. And just on the wall opposite is a wall full of pick-a-brick cubbies to satisfy your building needs in parts of every color. Now, we're sure at this point you've seen loads of stickers adorning the set, some referencing some of your favorite LEGO things, and others adding a next-level kind of oomph to this build. For anyone looking to nab this wonderful city set this upcoming new year, be wary that it's not just a lot of parts, but also a lot of stickers on it too. We didn't find them to be all that bad ourselves, but we know some folks out there really don't like things flat, decorative, and sticky. Truly, though, an amazing build from top to bottom, and we cannot wait to see how or if it links up with future sets, or even how you fellow builders work it into your own collections. This one is probably, decidedly, our favorite out of this wave. Once again, I would like to give a huge thank you to LEGO for sending us these sets. We had a wonderful time with them, it was an absolute blast getting to build these. Seriously, we can't thank you enough. You guys are awesome.